स्वामीने नमस्ते स्वरसती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चता दे सतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंदा श्री अद्वैत गदाधरा शिव सदी गौर भक्त वृंदा वाछा कल्पातरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु भयचा पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे हरे सो थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर गिविंग मी दिस ऑपर्चुनिटी टू बी एबल टू डू सम सर्विस अबाउट ग्लोरिफाइंग लॉर्ड नित्यानंदा एंड द मोर आई स्पीक अलाउड आई फील दैट यू नो आई एम स्पीकिंग टू माई सेल्फ टू माई ओन हार्ट टू माई ओन सोल एंड मे लॉर्ड नित्यानंदा मर्सी बी बिस्टोड अपॉन ऑल ऑफ अस um and i seek blessings and prayers of everyone here for um experiencing you know lord nitinand's mercy in our life especially uh you know his appearance is coming very soon so this is just a humble attempt to even you know as they say how can a, a torch light you know look at the sun and experience you know the greatness of the sun what how can i bring light to the glories of the lord by speaking about his you know about him it's just his mercy uh in some tiny little way that somehow he be pleased by all the efforts of all of you listening uh and from your prayers uh, to do some justice here okay so let me see if i could no okay. oh, sorry okay so uh wait oops i'm just trying to figure out my controls okay so glories of lord nitananda is so much to be said about lord nitananda um first let's take his darshan here uh prabhu are you able to see my pointer as well yes mata ji okay yeah so this is uh, the deities in mayapur panchatatva deities jay shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita gadadhar shivas adi gaur bhakta vrinda these deities those of you who have gone there and taken darshan these are seven feet tall deities you know more than uh, a human uh, height and uh, of course the adjoining temple or the altar um, where lord radha madhav sits that's they are they are 5 uh, feet and you know tall like that so the deities in mayapur are very very special very um just so magnanimous in their size in their decorations uh and in their mercy so you know any <clears throat> how we see and so so many wonderful devotees have served the deities and how this temple is <clears throat> was built so many years ago and the new temple um temple of vedic planetarium would be the new residence of their lordships very soon okay so lord nityananda this is uh, ek chakra oh the resolution may not be that great so sorry and actually these pictures are from my personal visit uh, during a yatra in 2005 so you should see its stamp here it's october 27 2005 um so there may be from <clears throat> some devotees or my own i don't know but this is a, from a very personal trip to mayapur uh, to mayapur and then ek chakra dham so here on the gateway says uh, nityananda's you know <clears throat> nityananda's dham entrance to ek chakra so we hear you know nityananda ram ek chakra dham so <clears throat> here <coughs> so sorry so the temple actually is uh, ek chakra dham is about 5 hours away from the mayapur temple and uh, that too if you are lucky uh, if you start at 4 o'clock we might reach there at uh, 10 o'clock it's that the uh, the west bengal roads are more filled with holes than with the you know with the road so 
and the traffic jams are so notorious there that you just can't predict the the, the reaching time. You just reach whenever you can. <laughs> so that's the status of the um, the roads. Uh, but on on an average, one can uh, attempt to and pray to reach by you know within four hours. Okay, so uh, it's actually just 165 kilometers from northwest of Mayapur, which would be what? How many kilometers? Well, two, three hundred, uh, three hundred kilometers, roughly, uh, three hundred miles, or even less. No, sorry. Um, about 80 miles, maybe 100 miles from, um, you know, in our US uh, calculation of the distance, just 100 miles away. So not that far, but it takes a while. And the roads, are, sorry, the buses are also, buses and the trucks, the way they drive, one has to be very careful just being around them. And actually, um, some of these sharings are from my personal visit. So the beautiful landscape of the place is it feels like it is untouched um, or at least at that time um, maybe 10 years later i don't know how it, it would be and how it is right now so it is it really feels very natural and um feels like it has not been touched since 500 years ago it's very uh, to its own glory how it was all year simple very very simple living um, and there is endless rice rice plantations on either side of the road as we are traveling. And um, the roads become very narrow as we get closer to the town, um, closer to Eka Chakra Dham. And uh, on the road, one will find, you know, husk uh, spread over on the road. And one may wonder, you know, why there is husk on the road. Actually, it is because the, the cow, um, they are taking... There are a lot of cows and I'll soon share, um, but the it's a cow feed. So they are taking on bullock cards and it's falling on the road. So that's the entrance of the dham of the Lord. And um, the <clears throat> arch says Nityananda's birthplace. Actually, that's what it says over there. And it feels like when we enter that gate, it's like, you know, entering the spiritual world. <laughs> Uh, it's the Lord's dham and what to say, you know, of anyone else but Lord Nityananda. And it says that through the mercy of Lord Nityananda, we can approach Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and through mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we can approach Radha Rani and from mercy of Radha Rani, we can approach Krishna. So, and Nityananda is uh, the ultimate guru uh, who is who's showing the path to Krishna. <clears throat> so the first uh, uh, darshan that we went for was the, I'll come back here uh, later, the God Nithayat is Iskon of Eka Chakra. So we have Iskon Temple and of course the other temples which are part of the, uh, which are from Lord Nithyananda's time. Uh, so we will, I'll describe those uh, eventually, but this is a place where um, there is separate Iskon temple as well. And the next, yeah, that's the deities of Iskon temple. And then this is really the structure. So that was getting constructed at that time. And um, it would have been, it would be very big by now, uh, the Eko Chakra Dham Iskon temple. Okay. So um, as we were, you know, going through the villages to um, be, you know, uh, come to come to the ISKCON and in general, like go around the town, it, the very vivid observation noticeable was that um, every house there had about 10 cows and calves, each house, and then the the walls were patched with the cow dung you know they'll dry the cow dung and patch it and um, uh, that's how they keep the houses cool so very sustainable living actually uh, something you know to be learned from the villagers in these places how they just keep the house cool it, it is not cold cold in um, you know Mayapur and during 
winter time or uh, sorry even during winter time it is pretty okay and uh, what to say of uh, march april may june july august september it's very very hot so this is the way uh, they have their own technology to keep the interiors hot and then when the cow dung's dried so when the cow dung is wet you know they will make that um, um, round thing to to patch the walls and those that will keep it cool but when they dry off because of the dried um, you know for the sun rays and other air coming in when it dries out they replace it by the fresh cow dung uh, patties and then though the ones that were dried out are used uh, as a fuel for cooking so very simple living just uh, relying on uh, um, you know, mercy of mother cow. And um, there's so much husk everywhere and so much mow mowing of the mowing of the cows. And so very easy to just even make friends with the, with the vill villagers. And some of the villagers, a lot of their work is to make tart sarees, the, the, the cotton sarees, and they have their, um, uh, what you say, the machinery for making the sari right there in in their houses ne next to their houses and uh, those wooden things that go clank clank and then you know all hand operated uh, at least by when i visited and while they're making the sarees or doing their work um saw like we saw personally that people were just chanting chitanya prabhu's name and lord uh, nitananda's name so that's really the devotion um very vivid devotion that they carry while doing whatever they are doing and they are remembering the lord and singing and uh, singing about the lord so <clears throat> um then let me come to the garbhavas so that the photo is this is the dt of Lord Nityananda at Garbhava's place. It, this is really the deity inside uh, the place where he, he took birth, the house. So uh, this picture, I mean, they don't allow to take camera inside, but some, some devotee through somebody uh, got us a picture. So it's not click picture, but however way somebody else clicked it. So we, um, visitors are not allowed with the camera to be inside. Okay, so this is a good. Yeah, and this is the Goshala of uh, Iskon in Ekachakra Dam. Very natural and just uh, the cows are fields at home and there's so much greenery there. Uh, it's uh, amazing. The amount of uh, uh, grass, which is naturally growing there to feed the cows. Okay, so when Lord Chitanya, um, Lord Nityananda, sorry, took birth, it was predicted that he would be um, no, he is no ordinary child. So because of that astrological calculation um, or pre prediction, uh, they actually uh, saved the umbilical cord of the Lord here in this place. And these places are very near. It's not that one has to walk very far off. Uh, once we park wherever in one place, then the whole, a lot of the town can be seen just by walking around. So um, it's, it's amazed to, and actually this is, there are two, two trees twined together here. Uh, somebody there told that uh, they were Krishna and Balaram trees. <laughs> that's how it is uh, known in that place uh, and um, and this is really where you know first probably uh, umbilical cord uh, preservation took place these days they pay a lot of money to have you know even small cells from stem cells from the umbilical cord when the child is born stored somewhere but Lord's umbilical cord is still here, Lord Nithinandas, without any technology. Okay, so just near this place <clears throat> is um, this. Uh, let me see. 
just very near to the place where Lord Umbilical's God is saved, Samadhi is made. Um, there are a group of like trees here. It's called Keli Kadamba trees. <clears throat> and this is where Pandavas lived with their mother when they were exiled to the forest. So when they were in hiding, they had even come to uh, this particular place, Ekachakra Dham, and they had incognito lived here. So, uh, so some intersection between, you know, different pastimes and different days, uh, different, uh, what to say, you know, yugas of um, artifacts over here. And as you said, as here, you see that uh, Pandavas had come. And uh, here, th this is a very simple, you know, a shop, which was right outside one of the temples. And just the carving of these deities, especially like they have Bengali features, big eyes, just like simple clothes. Um, and uh, these deities were so mesmerizing. Um, the one that, I mean, these were sold and small Jagannath, Balade, Subhadra, they are also painted in a certain way um, in that place. I just thought of including, actually these deities really uh, captured my heart. <laughs> okay, so moving ahead. Um, <clears throat> I'm just trying to find. So this is the first temple, uh, one of like, you can, as I said, go around, you know, the town and this, this is a temple that comes first when we step out of the ISKCON temple. It's called Bankim Rai temple. So once Lord Nityananda found a very large deity of Krishna um, and called Bankim Roy while he was taking bath in Yamuna. And then when he found the deity, he worshiped the deity. And that, that's how the temple is established. So this is, these are the, de no, no, sorry, I could not, I, I think we could not take picture over there. And uh, the Bankim Roy deity is in the middle. And then on the right hand side of, Krishna, Bankim Roy, is deity of Janava, who is an expansion of Revati. And on the other side of the Lord is Srimati Radharani. So actually that's, there in these places, there are very unique set of deities. You know, one side, um, if not standard, like Radha, Krishna, or um, other gopis. So there's a lot of mix of uh, deities here. So Janava, Janva's deities and uh, uh, Krishna and then Radharani onto the side. And then on the side um, of the, there was a, another throne where uh, Muralidhar and Radha Madhav, um, there was deities of Muralidhar and Radha Madhav, again, different forms of Krishna was also there. So these places are not well lit also, you know, so it was hard to even see what, uh, who's there on the altar. Um, I think they just turn on um, light uh, for a little bit, just one, one bulb or lamp. And actually that's how the lamps were uh, earlier offered. There's, there's no light, but lamps when we're doing the arti would, you know, give the light to the deities to be able to see their whole uh, vigra. And they, they said that the descendants of uh, son of Virabhadra, who's uh, son of Janva and Lord Nityananda, Lord Nityananda's wife Janva and Lord Nityananda's son Virabhadra. Uh, so the line of descendants of the Pujaris is, is the one who's worshiping these deities there. And these uh, deities of Hadai Pandit, and we'll soon talk more, the Hadai Pandit is father of Lord Nityananda. So he used to worship Jagannath Baladev Subhadra and his uh, deities are also in one of the temples. So then there is uh, Lord Shiva's temple also uh, in, in Eka Chakra Dham. So Lord Shiva as Muneshwara Mahadev. And actually yeah, in this temple were the deities of Hadai Pandit both of here. So Munishwara Mahadev and Jagannath Baladev Subhadra that Hadai Pandit worshipped were here. So they say that uh, even uh, um, 
Lord Shiva's temples are found in Vrindavan and the and actually sometimes in four corners of Vrindavan and it is shared that um, it is for protection of the dham. So and there, there is some role of each of the Lord in what um, direction you know why is he, his temples are there. So Lord Shiva is um, you know Vaishnava Shambhu. You know he's he's a his devotee of the Lord. So wherever Lord is, his temples are also found. Okay, so let me see. <clears throat> then um, nearby was Garbhavas. And uh, again, we are not allowed to take pictures over there, uh, where the actual place of Lord Nitananda's birth, and that is called Garbhavas. So the there are deities of uh, the, the temple, um, the, there was temple and the deities on the altar. So the center deity was Lord Nityananda. <laughs> center deity was Lord Nityananda, and on one side was Advaita Acharya, and on the other side was Lord Chitanya. So again, the the order of the deities and the deities themselves, um, you know, don't follow or have are very different in Ekachakra Dham than at other places. And then there was um, Narhari Sarkar had worshipped the deity, one deity of Chitanya Mahaprabhu, which was also over here. So um, there are places, um, there are worshippers of Lord Chitanya who had come here also to, you know, worship the deities in Ekachakra Dham. Okay, so the next place is... Uh, Kadamba Kandi. So Kadamba Kandi is uh, a small Kadamba river, you know, flowing through um, through Ekachakra Dham, and Lord Nitananda would perform a lot of pastimes uh, at this place, Kadamba Kandi. And um, <clears throat> The next is, uh, this was a small temple. So they made a temple here so much because this place was frequented by Lord uh, Nityananda very often. Uh, so these are the deities at Kadamba Kandi. So you see this one is a very special deity, Shadbud form of the Lord. Uh, Lord Rama, Krishna, and uh, Chitanya Mahaprabhu. And uh, yeah, another astonishing thing to note about the deities in Ekachakra dham is are their hand positions very unique hand positions sometimes they are actually in naked chakra and in even in amayapur other places where lord lord near to birth like sometimes they are in dancing mood sometimes they are in blessing mood like the hands of uh, the deities uh, here you see one is this one is kind of blessing and dancing and here it is really giving um you know just yeah giving blessings i would say <clears throat> here also so different hand positions and sometimes it's hard to like even comprehend you know how what they thought at that time when they were carving the deities and what was the lord's mood here that is reflected in the deities and all all the deities will have a very very simple clothing, you know, uh, uh, the deities at uh, Iskon Maya, uh, Iskon Ekachakra probably would be the most, uh, what you say, uh, exorbitant <laughs> or most lavish and what to say of uh, the deities in Mayapur. Uh, but at these places, a small, you know, covering over them and uh, simple clothing and their features are very, you don't even see jewelry on them, just, you know, clothing. Um, uh, and then their big eyes and the way they make the eyes and the eyebrows and the hairs and hand uh, all are very, very unique to uh, this Mayapur and Ekachakra place. So next is um, Chandan Sarovar. And let me see if uh, there is something I have. Yeah, so Chandan Sarovar uh, is, uh, they, this is the place where Padmavati, the mother of, uh, oops, something started here. Padmavati, the mother of Lord Chitanya, 
would uh, Lord Nityananda would smear faced on Nitai's body to reduce the body heat during you know the summertime and in the evenings she would bathe him in this rover. So that's the name we get, Chandan Sarovar. So get, gradually the Sarovar became Chandan colored. Um, this is the bathing ghat of uh, Lord Nityananda, as we we'll say. And going further down, uh, there's, a, there's a groove of trees and uh, there was an old house. And uh, that's a place where Pandavas resided also. Um, like they in this whole area as i shared the first slide where you know they would also gather and in other place where house they would stay and uh, and that's it this is just a view of the eco chakra from a little bit of height is full greenery just very um native village kind of a place so <clears throat> when lord chitanya left um sorry let me go back let me go back to sorry. So this is the tour i would say of lord nityananda's uh, little bit and there are there are a lot of things but this is just some glimpse of eka chakra dham so one very um uh i would say important event happened and uh, that is when Lord Nityananda left this earth. And sorry, my it's appearance day of Lord Nityananda, but we are beginning from when Lord Nityananda left. But we are going to go a little backwards of the series of events, and you probably would enjoy the hearing of what happened after his whole life story was uh, shared by Mother Janva. So that's what I'm getting to. So when he left uh, this earth after completing his pastime, Janva Mata you know, who was consort of Lord Nityananda, she was actually accepted as uh, chief Acharya by all the Vaishnavas, to, including Srinivas Acharya, Narutam Das Thakur, the six Goswamis. And Janva Mata was in the same mood as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So she exhibited her position as a supreme mother of all living entities rather than an, an Acharya, but she was really like given that position of an Acharya. So she was very compassionate towards fallen souls. And then once she came to Ekar Chakra Dham uh, with a large entourage of perfected souls. So she actually came along with Narottam Das Thakur, Veera Bhadra, Ramachandra Kaviraj, and many other devotees to pay respects to the place uh, of you know, Lord Nityananda's birth and his childhood pastimes. So that this town is so um, you know quiet and it's not like buzzing with any uh, much activity. It doesn't attract um, so much of uh, visitors or it's not so much of known unless uh, even at that time. So Mother Janva brought all these uh, devotees to this place to uh, take out the treasure of glories of Lord Nityananda and his pastimes and relish his presence in all these places. So as, his, as her entourage was coming down the main road, um, they saw from a distance very old Brahmana and he was leaning on his cane and walking very slowly on the shaded path of pipali trees. So they were, they were uh, overwhelmed with emotion uh, of finding a presence of a Brahmana and they offered respects at the feet, at his feet. So <clears throat> they did not even know that <coughs> these are the boundaries of Eka Chakra. Had they reached Eka Chakra or not? There were no boards and other things at that time. And there's a reason why whole Eka Chakra became very quiet and very uh, forlorn kind of a place. So they, they did not know even know much whether they have reached Eka Chakra or not. So old Brahma replied, yes, this is Eka Chakra. You have reached here. And then Mother Janva and their entourage ask, where are the people, buildings, and where is the bustling activities of Eka Chakra Dham? And then the Brahmana looked at the ground. He shook his head and very emotionally said, everyone is gone. Everyone is gone. Then Mother Janva asked, 
like where are they gone and would you like to share with us uh, what happened in this place and would you like to give us a description of eka chakra the brahmana said very well let's go and sit under a tree and then that's he began describing the story of the history of eka chakra and um we do not even know like the history of eka chakra is uh, you know very old and um a lot has been lost also so actually even before lord chitanya descended on the earth uh, lord nitananda had descended here so you know lord nitananda is brother of uh, krishna and sometimes in lord rama's past times as lakshmana he appeared as his younger brother and he was he felt to- tormented when uh, lakshmana was given the task to mur- leave mother sita and he his mood was to as lakshmana to just follow the orders and instructions of the lord and um, after that uh, you know lord nitin the uh, lord i mean lakshmana decided that's too difficult to be younger brother of the lord and be ordered by the lord so now i want to become a bigger brother you know where i can tell the lord or i mean in mood of service of course uh, he's he's the uh, ananta shesh and he's all the paraphernalia of the lord to facilitate his past times but then he decided i'm going to take birth as his bigger brother for for a change maybe <laughs> so so then lord nitananda has descended at eka chakra um before much before um lord chitanya descended and 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 when we said like pandavas and mother kunti had come here that was 5000 years ago when they escaped from the fire uh firehouse of uh, fire in the house of lack and they stayed here in hiding as simple brahmanas so for centuries this eka chakra was flourishing um and it was center for many brahmanas it was seat of high learning like lot of sanskrit scholars and vedic uh, vedic studies was done and a place where all the four varnas uh, were represented in complete harmony indeed this was a nice place for lord nitananda to appear to choose to appear uh, it's very pious very wonderful place and when astrological chart of lord nitananda were shown to many astrologers they all agreed that supreme lord has appeared in eka chakra but there was a very sad component of the whole story as well and which will unfold so uh, once there was a brahmana named oja uh, so this title was given to very learned and is ex uh, learned and people who are expert in describing the glories of the lord that's oja so he uh, ojas uh, the, um, the hadai oja pandit uh, uh, the father actually he worshiped munish um, murishwar mahadev deities and he had a number of children but all of them died soon after taking birth so in in course of time a son was born whose name was haro haro and that's really the father of uh, lord nitananda so from from the time of the birth haro showed symptoms of being a great devotee uh he was very attracted to deity worship and he became expert in reciting shlokas and then eventually he came to be known as hadai pandit so oja and then haro was his childhood name uh, the sons and then the his when the son of oja grew up he was named as hadai pandit and uh, hadai pandit was married to padmavati and he himself hadai pandit himself was an astrologer he was very learned so he calculated that a great son would be born of him but that son would die in a tragic way so hadai pandit and padmavati were more most respected brahmanas in the whole eka chakra because of their learning and their qualities and uh, hadai pandit was very gentle he was very mild kind and compassionate so he always wanted to give happiness to others um, and just by his presence people will feel happy and he was the delight of eka chakra dham and this was around 1474 ad like 12 years before lord chitanya appeared um as that a son was born in garbhavas under the shower of flowers from celestial beings and everyone understood that this is a great personality so the so the what this told earlier that this son would um and son would die in a tragic way so that is uh, they had another son um there were two two children 
um, I, I, I'll clarify that, you know, why it is uh, red, but of course, um, that was not a prediction of uh, for Lord Nityananda. So I just had to clarify that a little bit. So when Lord Nityananda was born 12 years ago, and he was born under the shower of flowers in Garbhavas, and uh, everyone understood this is a great personality. So two names were given to the child, Nityananda and Ram. So Nitai and Ram, and both combined became Nityananda Ram. So Hadai Pandit and Padmavati gave him a nickname Nitai. And after his birth, everybody noticed auspiciousness around them. Rainfall in seasons were regular, diseases disappeared. There was harvest, a lot of bountiful harvest, like we just said, Vasan Panchmi was just yesterday. <clears throat> where this um, harvesting happens and all the signs of good fortune manifested in Eka Chakra. And uh, Nitai was center of attraction for the hearts of the people of Eka Chakra and their attention was focused on Nitai. It was so much absorbed, just the way, you know, when Krishna took birth, uh, you know, everybody was there. Krishna was the focus of Vrindavan. Here, Nitai was focus of Eka Chakra. Nitai, even as a child, naturally showed his attraction for the personality of Godhead, and he was fixed in pastimes of Krishna in Vrindavan. With his boyfriends from neighborhood, they would enact the pastimes of Krishna all day long. These pastimes uh, actually are wonderfully described in Chaitanya Bhagavat. I was initially thinking of uh, reading from Chaitanya Bhagavat also, but we just don't have time. So uh, Lord Nityananda's in, uh, he playfully enacted with his friends uh, pastimes of like um, killing demons, and then Nityananda would uh, Lord uh, Nityananda would be the author, director, choreographer, costume designer uh, of these dramas. And they they uh, once they went to Kundas as if they are offering prayers to the Vishnu on the shore of Milk Ocean. And one boy will become Garbodakshai Vishnu and then said, well, soon I will make my appearance and tell the demigods to, to descend. So, uh, so they enacted the appearance of Lord Krishna and one, one boy with four arms appeared in darkness and Vasudev and Devki in a very detailed fashion, they would enact the passings of the Lord so much so that the uh, adults, elders would be surprised. Like, how do you know all of this? You know, you just a few years you have taken birth and you know everything. Um, and then uh, killing of Agasura and um, sh shaking the tall trees, killing Dhenukasura. And, um, and then they went to the storerooms of the residents. Uh, they would enact that pastime to steal butter uh, and how Kalya took... Um, uh, killing of uh, deliverance of Kalia or subduing of Kalia, and they would perform that pastimes near that river that I showed you uh, earlier, uh, the Kund, you know, the Kadambakandi river. And um, then children fell down dead, and then Lord Nityananda will glance at them, they'll come back to life, and things like that. So, but then once they performed Lord Rama's pastimes from Ram Leela, so the uh, they beautifully enacted the battle between Lakshma and Indrajit. So Lakshmana, Lord Nityananda himself became, performed the role of Lakshmana. And when he was uh, hit by Shakti Shala weapon and he fell down on the ground, lifeless. So that's, and he really stayed lifeless for a while that uh, there was, elders have to be called and see what happened to uh, Nitai because he's just not responding. So there was no sign of breathing uh, also on uh, Nitin, uh, for Lord Nityananda when he was playing the pastimes of uh, Lakshmana. Then all children started in Eka Chakra Dham. All children started crying and all villagers gathered. Everyone panicked and wailing that he's no more alive. Now what to do? So, but then there was one boy <laughs> who was playing the role of Hanuman. He remembered, oh, uh, I was supposed to bring herb from the mountain to, you know, um, to in in to bring the life back into Lord uh, um, Lak uh, into Lakshmana's body. So he went across the lake and had a big fight with the demon and brought back a small mountain. I mean, he brought back some small um, thing resembling a mountain. So as soon as herb was placed near 
uh, Nimai, Nitai's um, nose, Lord Nityananda opened his lotus eyes and then everybody was joyful. So this way, they it was not just a child's play, but everyone experienced the transcendental emotions when uh, Nitai himself was performing all these enacting, like, you know, Lord himself is enacting as a childhood play, um, you know, these pastimes, reliving the pastimes. So, so life in Eko Chakra was just around little Nitai and the boys. They didn't, people didn't care um, for, uh, or children did not care for eating and uh, mothers were so absorbed in the pastimes and everything was so happy. There was in transcendental ecstasy of Krishna's leelas performed as pastimes by Lord Nityananda and other people. So they just felt like, you know, they felt emotions of what Brajvasis felt. And um, uh, so then actually one, one, uh, one elderly person asked uh, that, um, I was surprised that, you know, how Nitai knew all these pastimes. So, the, so they really asked, uh, Nitai, you know, how, how do you know this? Um, and then uh, Nitai responded, well, these are my pastimes. <laughs> so even though he shared, you know, that it's, uh, he, he's, um, he, he's Lord's associate, but by yoga maya potency, those residents did not understand what he's saying. And uh, Padmavati loved Nitai extremely and would not let him out of her sight. And Hadaya Pandit would take Nitai to marketplace to buy him various things. He would take him to the fields to show the growing of the crops. So the whole Eka Chakra was absorbed in Lord Nityananda's presence. But then <laughs> a very saddening episode took place. So one day, Sanyasi came to Eka Chakra and went to Hadaya Pandit. Hadai Pandit was very happy to receive the sannyasis. You know, he's the most respected Brahmana and he has all this uh, wonderful hospitality to receive all these great sannyasis and devotees. So he offered him water, uh, prasadam, and he discussed Krishna Kata all night long with great happiness with that um, sannyasi. And in the morning when sannyasi asked for permission to leave, Hadai Pandit asked if uh, he could be of any service and, or if he could give him anything. Wow, that was uh, <clears throat> uh, very, uh, what you say, a question that the answer to, to that question was very difficult for Hadai Pandit. So the Sanasi said, well, I'm getting old now and it is becoming difficult for me to move around to make practical arrangements as I visit places of pilgrimage. I would like your son to assist me. Hadai Pandit was devastated but he has already given his word. Uh, a, a respectable personality under all circumstances keep his word. Hadai Pandit cried and begged and pleaded. He said, he's just very young. He's just 12 years old and does not know practically to do anything. I mean, he can't take care of himself. I mean, we have to feed him and do so many things for him. How can basically, how can he take care of you or do anything for you? And he's our only son. So yeah, I have to double check on a couple of things um, because there was some pre pre prediction that he would be, it's a, you know, Lord himself has taken birth, but there's something else. So I'll, I'll double check on that. So he's our only son. We are dependent on him for each and everything. Can we make another arrangement for you? Like, can I find some other people to send to you? The sannyasi replied, no, I want your son only. And by the time Padmavati also came to know what's happening. So Padmavati was devastated when she heard this proposal. She personally went to plead her heart to the, to the sannyasi. She said, take my life away. But please don't take Nitai away from here. I have lost so many children. And he's the only remaining child. So here is the answer. Yeah, I was, um, I think I missed um, a line or two. So there were children born of them but they had died they would die and but one would stay and that one would stay would be the glorious lord himself a very you know the personality who would attract everybody's heart so that's the missing link they had children but they died yeah and this was the only living son uh, or only living child 
So she said, please do not take him. You are a sannyasi, you are independent. You are renounced and detached, but we are householders. And all we have is our son. She was weeping so piteously that it could easily break the heart of any sannyasi. The sannyasi smiled and pulled out his Murlidhar deity and said, whenever you want to wish, uh, whenever you want to see your child, you will see your son in this deity. Padmavati looked at the deity and she saw her son in a moment. And the moment she saw the deity and she saw her son, that very moment, the sannyasi was gone with Nitai. Her heart completely broke and her life became aimless. She started crying aloud and everybody came to inquire about what had happened. Somehow calming herself, she said piteously, Nitai has gone from Ekachakra. He left with the sannyasi. Everyone wailed aloud, no, let us stop them. You look this way, you look that way. We must find him and stop him. He can take my son instead. You know, people are saying, he can take my son instead of Nitai. What does Nitai know? My son is older. He does things. It is better that he take my son, but leave Nitai. But they could not find the sannyasi and Nitai anywhere. The whole of Ek Chakra was literally ruined. Hadai, Padma, Hadai Pandit and Padmavati could not speak. They could not eat. They could not sleep. Day and night, they simply wept incessant tears. They became mad and delirious. In this state of madness, Hadai Pandit would call, Nitai, let's go to market and I'll buy you something. Nitai, it's time to milk the cows. Please come. It is time for your food. Nitai, Nitai, Nitai. And soon he will understand. He would start crying again. That Nitai is no more there. After some time, Hadai Pandit and Padmavati just gave up their lives out of sadness. All the residents of Eka Chakra also could not tolerate to remain in the place where they had seen their beloved Nitai perform his heart-capturing pastimes. So one by one, they left this place and became like a ghost town. So from flourishing and warm place and so much ecstasy that was in that place, it was once like that, gradually it has deteriorated into nothing and actually that's what we even see now. It's very, very small um, place where there's not much hustle bustle, just very quiet. But, well, why this whole thing happened? Because Lord Nityananda appeared for a greater purpose. So by the time Lord Chitanya has um, already arrived and uh, had to... <clears throat> begin the pastimes um, with Lord Chitanya. So to, to deliver the love of God um, and be uh, as a servant of Lord Chitanya. So Lord Nityananda um, now was the elder brother and but his mood was that of service towards Chitanya Mahaprabhu. So had he stayed here in Eka Chakra, the great purpose would not have been accomplished. So he created this Leela on the strength of the Brahmanical principles of his father, especially to, you know, principle of always keeping one's word. And similar thing happened to Dashrath Maharaj when uh, Lord Rama was taken away to marry Sita Devi. So similarly, like, you know, okay, you have given me the word, now I just want to take Lord Rama. Similarly here, on the strength of their Brahmanical principles. Um, and similarly, Lord... Kapila, Kapila Dev left his mother Devahuti, Kardama Muni left Devahuti for her purpose. Shukdev Goswami left Vyasadev in order to travel and speak Bhagatam to Maharaj Parikshit. And then also Chitanya Mahaprabhu left Sachi Mata, Vishnu Priya, Kola Vichar, Sridhar, Srinivas Thakur, Advitachara, and all his, his very, very close associates. Um, but the main purpose was to spread the message of love of God far and wide. And that we see, like, you know, Srila Prabhupada left Vrindavan. Srila Prabhupada left Mayapur to, you know, come to these places to be able to perform the pastimes. So that's uh, the <clears throat> history behind uh, Lord Chitanya's and Lord Nityananda's appearance and why he left Eka Chakra. So in these pastimes, we'll see that Lord Chitanya and Lord Nityananda um, they have made uh, 
huge sacrifice and it to to be able to share the message of um or to give us krishna consciousness and it feels that well it it happened so many years ago but through the disciplic succession uh, and many sacrifices made uh, by sorry just checking the time many sacrifices made by the disciplic succession and chila prabhupad uh, personally and other devotees even continuing to make now to share this this purpose um, of why lord uh, nitananda left eka chakra this flourishing eka chakra uh, and love of all the associates you know to to spread the holy name and then um we also hear about you know how uh, how merc how merciful was lord um nitananda through the past times of jagai and madai like lord uh, uh lord chitanya was ready to kill them and he called for his chakra but then he reminded the lord that no your your purpose in this in this uh past time in gauralila is to be able to transform people and not kill the the transformation is through it's the killing of the material perspective or uh, material consciousness and reviving the spiritual consciousness so through his uh, humility through his mercy and through his empowerment purity and compassion he had transformed um jagai and madai and his mercy is uh, you know flowing to us with the same compassion of um, uh, what you say kind of um, like uh, accommodating our shortcomings but even if a little service is done to chitanya mahaprabhu lord nitananda is just so pleased and when he's when he's pleased he only recommends the name of that soul to to chitanya mahaprabhu for for the for delivering them just the way he did for jagai and madai so these are some thoughts and um, i mean there's so much to read from chitanya bhagavat on details and details of the past times and how uh, when he first met chitanya mahaprabhu that meeting uh is amazing uh in in uh, in mayapur actually these places are just very near uh, even the mayapur uh, place um places of past times very near just walking distance from the main temple is a place where they met for the first time and such an ecstasy between lord chitanya and lord nitananda uh pouring you know, from their hearts i mean they are eternal associates but you know meeting after so many years lord chitanya was separate from lord um, nitananda so and that's uh, also a beautiful past time to read so those are some thoughts any anybody else wants to share include some of their thoughts or share any personal um, appreciation of lord nitananda and their his mercy you know flowing on us Oh, i wish i could have included picture of um, the deities but probably right after this is the aarti we can take darshan of uh, god and itai <laughs> and actually all the devotees who are making sacrifices in the temple uh, in this uh, difficult situation in boston to be able to serve uh, serve the deities is also part of the mercy of the lord for us okay <clears throat> anyone should i call out some hari krishna mata janu pranam mata ji thank hari krishna prabhu thank you for the excellent message the salish prabhu mata ji thank you for the wonderful class and it's really thank you for taking us to the all the places thank you so much one quick question mata ji you told about uh, uh, pandavas pandavas stay there no yeah. any 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 marks or any any uh, any uh, landmarks you know like any way we can identify some of the things mataji like is there any past times that happened over there that we can recognize no not much details i heard about the past times in that place but um i 
think there was an artifact like a stone where they would stay they would cook um just one or two things about um, which i kind of recalled from the visit but nothing big nothing that you know there's an engraving or any uh, big remnants of you know at that time but just i think one some small pieces of stone that could have been their cooking place or their seating place uh, is all that i remember all that i remember that was oh, nice but Mm-hmm. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Okay, so it's uh, six o'clock. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.